Listeners be advised, the Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not exposed. Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Okay, she sounded different from this computer. I don't recognize her. I, I, I need to go back to my other changed. computer. She changed. <laughs> it's a whole new woman. <laughs> Who are you? Who's this oh bitch? <laughs> Who is this bitch? Like, for real? Oh, my God. Um, so, I don't know her. I need to go back to my my original girl. I like her. We, 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 finally, we finally got to a point where I'm comfortable with her voice. I love it when she tells me that recording's in progress. And now we're changing up voices. Who am I going to have tomorrow? Some man? No. No. Do not do these changes to me. Zoom. Don't. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Let me open up this show. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the whole Little Bee podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Sebastian Adams. Oh, mm, did not mean to say him second, but also known as Slater Jackson. <sighs> on today's episode, we are talking about celebrity crushes, and I am blessed to have Mel- Melissa back. How are you doing, sweetheart? I am good and I'm happy to be back. I loved our conversation last time. So excited. Same, same. Uh, I like, I was listening to it like a couple days ago and I'm just like, this is such a great combo. And the knowledge that you dropped most definitely with um, everything going on in um, California related to like sex trafficking and it just, it's a good reminder uh in that episode just listening to that um and it's just makes me reflect on a diff uh, like different states in a different way too because i can only imagine what the hell is going on in texas because it's always what the fuck texas so yeah yeah. it's so crazy how each state is so different like right Right. now we're on fire that's Mm, been fun yes aren't y'all having power outages too we have that every year so you Mm. know It's just every time we have like a heat wave or a fire, which is like almost all the time, we also have like our power issues, which is really annoying because they just passed a bill or law bill, whatever. I don't know. I don't know much about that stuff, but like they want to go to electrical vehicles by 2034, 35. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you can't even handle the electrical grid now. Like, how are we supposed to have (laughs) electrical vehicles in the future? What are you talking about? That's a good question. And that's the one thing I hate when it comes to, like, politicians and making these grandiose statements. I'm like, but what is the plan? Like, are we going to have a step-by-step plan to make sure that we have this by 2034? Because without that, it's not making sense. Like, are we going to, like... In 2023, we're going to be purchasing land for like solar panels. And by the time we get that, those acquisitions uh, finalized, then we start building them in 2025. That, uh, then 2026, uh, improve the power grid throughout the state, make sure everybody's on the same power grid so that they can uh, subsidize the energy throughout the state with po- solar power. And then make sure that electric vehicles are a lot more affordable by 2027 like are, are, what are, what are the steps <laughs> yeah exactly because like i'm not rich okay Girl. <laughs> i don't know if i can afford electrical vehicles those are expensive 
Amen. Especially like, and there's not a lot of options right now. Well, no, I guess like a lot of a lot of companies are starting to make electrical vehicles, but mm-hmm. they're so pricey. Extremely pricey. I think uh, was it Ford that came out with that that it was actually a beautiful truck. I I, I don't like I'm not like an F-150 person anyways, but I mm-hmm. saw it. I was like, that is looking great. And it's electrical. Yes, sis, you do you for it. But <laughs> at the same time, I'm like, but why is it eighty thousand dollars? Who got yeah. that? <laughs> like that's more than a year's income for people. Exactly. For a lot of people. Exactly. My goodness. And like, we're in a heat wave right now. So I don't know when this episode's gonna come out, but California is going through a heat wave and Sacramento just broke the record for 116 degrees. And they're telling us, please don't uh, conserve your energy between four and nine. And I'm like, that's the hardest part of the day. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're just going to bake a little bit. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, God. Yes. Like even on uh, my end over here in the East uh, in Georgia, I, I don't even know what the weather is going to be like the next day at all. It, and I'm used to that in terms of like Georgia weather does whatever the hell it wants to do. Mm-hmm. But these days it's very, very kind of scary because I'm like, all right, we have heavy winds one random day and then it's raining the next day and then it's hot as hell. And I'm like, what are these conditions telling me? And I'm still scared at the fact that we have not heard anything related to hurricane season and we're now in September. And I'm oh, like, geez. it's going to be like, bam, just one day. <laughs> just one day. Like, oh, we have eight hurricanes coming. What the fuck do you mean eight? <laughs> How? Are we catching up? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> be care be safe out there <laughs> exactly <laughs> if you last let somebody know that you're still with us <laughs> oh jeez oh, this weather is crazy but yeah what we're here to talk about celebrities and uh crushes <laughs> 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 to start off um we're gonna so this is what I'm going to do. We're going to do um, yours and then we have that mutual and then we're going to go into um, mine. So okay. to start off, we have Henry Cavill or Cavill is Cavill something. I'm sorry if I messed up your name, sir. <laughs> but yeah. we have Henry to start off. Why Henry? So I'm I am a big nerd. <laughs> like at the out, like just love video games and anime and um, just, you know, all the stereotypical nerdy stuff, right? Yes. And so Henry Cavill, Cavill, whatever your name is, Henry, <laughs> he, he plays a lot of like nerdy characters and he himself is a huge nerd, like personally. And so like he is, I know him more of um, as the Witcher. Mm-hmm. So he's Geralt of Rivia. If you haven't watched the show or played the game, but I did, you know, watch and play the game. Yes. And it's just, it's a really good game, you know? And I was like super excited that it was going to become this TV show and like Netflix took it on. And when he um, came on as like, girl, I was like, oh my God, he is beautiful. (laughs) Excuse me, sir. (laughs) I was like, how dare you be Carol? Um, and like, and then it like got even better because it's his personal life. I guess when he was a kid, he was called like Fat Henry. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I relate. I was Aww. always a big girl. And then he became like the superstar or whatever. Um, now he's all like buff, but like he is into video games. He built his own computer, you know, Aww. and he like, he knew he read the books and he played the game and so he really honed in that Geralt character so even from like an artistic perspective like he really did a good job as acting as that character as well so overall just you know in a way awesome like that is beautiful like to be a fan um mm-hmm. because I think about those um like if I ever had a possibility of being like on a mainstream role from something I love since like childhood oh my god (laughs) like that will be so beautiful and I'm I love that that he got to do that um from playing the games to literally being the character that's beautiful and yes the man is very handsome 
very, <laughs> very handsome. And I'm like, okay, good sir. Yes. Like, I don't, I don't, I've never heard of you before today, but I'm glad that I've watched this show. Like, you're blessing the screen and I, I, I'm grateful. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> so what about Kylo Ren, Mr. Adam Driver? The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. So what about Kylo Ren, Mr. Adam Driver? So his is more of, well, I am a huge Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. Love Star-, Star Wars. Watched like, you know, the Clone Wars animated series and Rebels and all that stuff, you, you know. And um, I'm not a fan, honestly, of like Disney Star Wars, but I really liked Kylo Ren and his character. And, and I love like how... Okay, you're gonna. I don't know if you're gonna make fun of me for this, but um, (laughs) my husband always makes fun of me for this. But I always fall for like the damaged guys, Mm. if that makes sense. So, like, um, what's a good example? Like in Walking Dead, I loved Daryl. Like, I mean, everyone loves Daryl, but he came from like a hard childhood, you know, he was abused, had an alcoholic father. And so I'm a sucker for those like damaged dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm not judging because that's what I attract. And I, I'm not saying that I'm looking for damage, but it just finds me. And I'm just like, I'm not trying to fix anybody. I'm not. Lord, why are you doing this to me? But like, I get it. I get it. And there's something that I do like when it does come with somebody who might be damaged, but those people who are damaged and healed, the maturity of yeah, those people, exactly. I love so much. <laughs> I don't want the damage that turns into like a raging alcoholic. I want the damage that heals and matures. Right. Can you hear my dog? Uh-uh. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like going crazy over there. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but yes, like... I- like you said, do not want an alcoholic, but someone who's healed, somebody's working on themselves, someone mm-hmm. who's like that can feed into you and also feed into themselves and also accept being fed into. Like, that's the thing that I love when it does come to someone that I meet that happens to be damaged uh, versus those who just um, fall into my radar and just damaged and damaged and continue their damaged lives. And I'm just like, I feel for you. Uh, I hope for the best. I am in your corner rooting for you, but mm, I'm not trying to be in this situation. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'll be your cheerleader from the side. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Uh, So it is, I I love that um, it's the damaged past that connects you because um the character that we share mutually is quite damaged but before we get into that one uh is there anything else that you want to add about kylo well also another reason why i like kylo is because he kind of looks like my husband (laughs) um but like full white version of him because my husband's like half filipino (laughs) so just that aspect too like not only is he like a star wars character and he's like a damaged dude that becomes good at the end but also he reminds me of my husband. So oh, the spicy Kylo, we love mm. it. <laughs> <laughs> so the character that we have in common is Vegeta. And I like as an anime character, uh, Vegeta is actually hot. Like I would say it is after Namek, like his, his redemption arc. Let's put it that mm-hmm, way. Yeah. That's when he 
became a little bit more attractive. Like when Boma pretty much was like, look, what we're not going to do <laughs> is what the fuck you thought you were going to do because I'm not here for that. You're going to respect me as a woman. And she, like, yes, Boma changed that man for the better. So yes. when Boma put her hands in it, somehow it just became beautiful. And I love that. <laughs> oh my God. I was going to say the same thing. Cause I'm like, I, that's one of my favorite relationships in anime. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She, she's just so good for him, you know? And like, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it's corny, but it shows like you know, how much love can like turn you to a good person. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think like of anime relationships are just relationships in general. Um, and you know how people just like, you have to be willing to die for your lover and whatnot. I usually like know that, you know, the Romeo and Juliet kind of die for somebody. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm, no, but in terms of like Vegeta and, um, Bulma, I love that aspect of them because it's not necessarily that they're willing to die for each other, but they're willing to fight for each other. Like yeah. Bulma stood up to a whole God <laughs> for Vegeta <laughs> and Vegeta stood up for, uh, to a God for Bulma. And I'm like, Goku could never, like, I know Goku's he loves. Too, I don't know. He's too like goofy and like in his own little world. Mm-hmm. Like, I know. I know he loves Chi Chi and Chi Chi <laughs> loves him, but I'm just like, I love their relationship dynamic too because they are perfect for each other. But at the same time, I'm just like, Goku, you don't like your kids, fam. <laughs> you yeah. Don't. He's he's like the husband that comes home like once a year. Exactly. You know? It's like, <laughs> why are you here? Like, I just did all these things and now you're back for a huge meal, sir what <laughs> yeah i was not shipping them i was like chi chi does the cleaning she does the cooking she raised your children like where are you off like trying to get balls around the world like no <laughs> <laughs> come Mean- home <laughs> meanwhile vegeta is being a very loving yet tough parent to his children who well, was his child uh, yeah is there going to be like a second child like in super was Bulma pregnant or no I forget uh oh I don't remember it's been so long I just remember Trunks yes I remember he's a little cutie too yeah he's adorable him and Goten in there I'm just like oh look at y'all mm. <laughs> <laughs> a little fusion thing they do it's <laughs> like <laughs> One day they'll be stronger, but I, I really do want to know what teen Gotenks and teen, well, adult Gotenks would look like. Because in like the GT verse, I think Goten is dead. And um, and I think uh, within the future version, within like canon, I think Goten is also dead because there's never really any reference to Goten other than we know Gohan trained uh, Trunks. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, did he die? Did they did this fusion thing? They forgot continue? about him. <laughs> like, <laughs> he went off to college. <laughs> he never came back. He doesn't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lord, but yeah, Vegeta, definitely a hottie. Um, so my my celebrity crushes are. Uh, well, they're from the same game. Uh, it's Master Chief and Cortana. Uh, and for Master Chief, it's the voice in the suit for me. Because I have absolutely, I don't know if he ever took off his hood in like any of the games. Uh, like I stopped at Halo 3. After that, I just was like, you know, I don't play as many video games as I want. But yeah, I just stopped there. And I don't ever remember him actually taking off of his taking off his helmet. But the voice, I'm just like, yes, sir. And then I already had this theme for metal already. So it's like the suit is giving me what I need. So that man, beautiful. Now Cortana, also her voice is very soothing, very relaxing. And then they did give her a corporeal corporeal form. Is that the word? It's something with the CRK. I don't know that word. Uh, They gave her like uh, a figure and I was like, okay, Cortana, look at you, girl. Your voice was already (laughs) cute. And then they make you like a whole body and girl got body. Yes. Okay, girl. So 
I am attracted to, um, you know, the both sides of Cortana too. Um, and it's kind of weird because AI also kind of creeps me out. Like in like the, <laughs> <laughs> in the real world kind uh, context, you know, because they keep making all these things to make cyborgs, I might as well say. Mm-hmm. That thing kind of creeps me out. And I don't want to be out here dating and accidentally end up dating a cyborg. And then I'm just like, hold up. What the hell just happened? <laughs> I thought you were a whole human this entire time. I'm not judging you, but we got to recalibrate. Like, literally, like, how did we get to this point? <laughs> but, like, that that just creeps me out. However, Cortana is beautiful, regardless. <laughs> so, that AI, Yes. <laughs> I had to Google uh, Master Chief because like it's been a while since I've seen it Mm -hmm. and I'm like man whoever designed that suit just accentuates all the right places they knew what they were doing they knew what they were doing and I'm just like like the aliens in the game they're cute but like (laughs) the the suit is just so sexy and I'm like Yes. And then like even because I'm looking at stances and whatnot, like there's this one uh, with him with one of the uh, weapons in his hand off to the side. And I'm just like, sir, you bet you better serve what needs to be served because the God like they, they knew what they were doing. Like he has great power stances. Yeah. Master Chief is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like looking at it right now. Oh, hold up. I just found something where they do have Master Chief without a... Uh, oh, without uh, his uh, helmet? Yes. He looks like... Have you ever seen uh, American Gods? No. So, um, okay, I need to look up the uh, actor's name. So I think this is the live action version of him. And that guy from American Gods, the leprechaun dude, is attractive. So I'm okay with him playing Master Chief because, like, I already found him attractive. So it's like, yes, double up for the one time. Um, So, yes. Now I need to know his name. Is it the dark hair, short dark hair? Um, I think he's white, white dude. Yes. Him, maybe. Yes. Okay. Him. okay. Yeah, I see it. Like, oh, okay. What is his name? He pay- he played Matt Matt Sweeney. Um, who is um? Da, 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 da. Oh, uh, Ewan Rayon. Is that how you say that? I don't know. But yes, fine. So him playing Master Chief that just makes it even better. So I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I picked a good one. Yes. <laughs> and a voice is so in point, in, in, important too. Like um, Pedro Pascal as the Mandalorian, like before he took off his helmet. Yes. Sexy voice. Love Very. his voice. He yes. lifted that helmet though. And I was like, nope, put it back on. Put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pedro, but... <laughs> Mm, I I agree. It's it's like it's not to say that he's unattractive because he's an attractive dude, but mm-hmm. it was not matching the voice. It, it was it, not. It was it for some reason? I I was expecting completely different. His face is too too soft. I think for mm. for the voice, you need a more like hardened guy. I don't know. Mm. More of you a like I mean? block kind of change. Well, yeah, not block, block, not but, you block know. but like more chiseled, more defined. Yes, you know, but it's okay. That. He has his <laughs> helmet on most of the time. <laughs> 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 That's okay. <laughs> I'm done. That's worse than saying you have a bag over your face. Not really. <laughs> I, I would rather have a helmet over my uh, face than the bag. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I will say this will be a great place to end this episode. Uh, I do want to say thank you so much, Melissa, for sharing your wisdom and your crush with the podcast listeners. Uh, Love you. Uh, Everyone, please make sure you do go listen to her podcast, The Talking of Introvert. It is available on all the pretty much all of the podcasts yeah, everything apps. anywhere <laughs> so <laughs> definitely listen to her um do you have any last words that you would like to share with the audience no just like thanks for having me on and yeah if you want to listen to me talk i'm not as organized as vernon i don't have like specific things i just talk about whatever so if you're into that 
go check that out but yes yeah. we love it uh, now um audience I, I have to apologize to you all because i do not have my word track with me i'm currently uh, out of town so don't judge me <laughs> uh, but thank you all so much for listening to the holy weekly podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality um i will try to use the, do the affirmation but i don't want to mess that up but i do want you all to know that i do definitely love you all um you are beautiful regardless of what anybody else says and i will catch you all next episode bye bye Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.